six is what it costs for that meter. Sixty dollars okay. gallon. Yeah, we decided to pull out of the we're going to call the North Coast Sanitary uh, Sewer District District Meeting to uh, oh, excuse me, Open North Coast Area Sanitary District. Roll call. Bob Anderson, Don Billings, Steve Blair, John Bruggerman. I'm sorry. <laughs> Robert Thompson, Terry Murray, audience. Uh, Brian McBride, Doug Dull, and Chopper McBride. Stacy Can and Cindy and Steve, uh, Greg J uh, Snyder. Oh, okay. Anything from the audience? Additions or depletions? Chair. Go ahead. I would so move to approve the agenda except for the item under old business that states review of East Cooch and North Cooch contract and resolution in that uh, the resolution is basically the same as the resolution that was voted on at our last regular meeting and was defeated. Therefore, I feel that the, the intent of both resolutions are of the same intent that it should not be allowed. Also, the current resolution in this packet is not legal. Uh, the resolution has a blank wording and you can't vote on a resolution that has blank wording. So therefore, uh, both the East Cooch, North Cooch contract and resolution item on the agenda should be removed. And that is my motion. We have a second. A second. Discussion? I what was the wording, the kind of wording, Don, that was uh, the not little, allowed? The resolution. It's in the packet. That's in your packet. Yeah, right, right, right. The last part is just, there's no wording. It's just a blank. Oh. Like it's supposed oh. to have wording, but right, right. there is none. So we don't know who's going to approve, put the wording in, or how the wording is going to be, or. Right. So I, yeah. it's illegal and it should not be brought to this board. I thought there was something we tabled at the last meeting, but I don't see it here now. What was that, Steve? Did we ta not table that discussion? or? No, that there, was a, there was a vote to table, but that was shot down. Okay. So Don, are you opposing the entire thing that's on the agenda or just the resolution? I'm opposing the last item under old business. Including the review of the contract? That is correct. Okay. That's something that we had talked about in, during financial um, discussions last time that we said that we would do, but... I believe it should be done, but... Not in the format that has been presented. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. I, I mean, I'm just I I just got this in the packet today, so that's the first time I saw it. But this is the service agreement broken down, um, and I agree there there needs to be a, it needs to be looked at again. Um, what I would like to know, I mean, we don't East Cooch has our financials available to them. We don't have their financials, do we? Does Stacy do the financials for East Cooch? Stacy does. So she I has all it. their revenues and yep. what their. Yep. That's what I would like to see too. Don, could we arrange that? Pardon? Could we arrange for that to be part of our packet going forward? Yes, I'm sure it can be done. It would have to be talked about. Sure. Well, the reason I ask is there's 
two methods of billing, and East Cooch has a different method than we do in town. My sewer is based on how much water I use. Their sewer is just based on flows, average flows. For the individual person, however, we build East Cooch based on flows. Right. Same as we do right here in yeah. International Falls. But they have a flat, they get a flat bill quarterly. Right, but that's up to the East Cooch board. They can use as much water as they want, and they still get paid the same for sewage. In oh. town, if I People do, yes. no. flush the toilet Sorry, out, my sewage charge. Go ahead, John. Um, well, there's, a, there's two different issues there involved in resolution, and they're both kind of fuzzy in there. Um, I, I think that uh, there's nothing to say that we cannot review the contract uh, before we resign it for the for the, uh, 2018. And I think that there possibly, um, we should have a legal review of that as well. Well, I guess I did a lot. I went over some of this stuff. And I mean, uh, I think before we make any decision, you're right, somebody has to go in there and look at exactly what is being paid and how it's being paid because I look and I, so I, I look at different employees, what their jobs are. <clears throat> and I'm not picking on anybody in particular. I look at, we pay, they pay $29,000 a year for our secretary. And most of the work she does is for East Cooch. That's not accurate. The one you, the, her breakdown of her job? <clears throat> her time is spent about 50-50. Okay. And then you look at what they pay for one full employee, ninety-three thousand dollars. Well, if you figure it out, I think you could. If you're making thirty dollars an hour, you can almost times that by two, and it comes up to about sixty dollars an hour for a, a full. Uh, I've done the detailed analysis on it based on all the actual numbers. And I'm not that far off, almost doubling what your hourly wages and what your benefits are, a loaded uh, salary. You're about 15% um, high. Think so? I, I don't know what... Point what, of order, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, that has nothing to do with the motion that's on the table. No, but I mean, we're going to look at, if we're going to look at East Cooch and, and North Cooch's contract between them, I think we have to look at it fairly and and uh, do a breakdown just to see. Because, I mean, I hate to see the partnership break, but I mean, I think we there's some way we can work. We have to have more money to run this uh, operation from East Cooch. I believe that. I don't think the $93,888 is enough to cover a full-time employee's uh, loaded salary. Again, that has nothing to do with the motion on the table. Well, it does indirectly because they want to open it up. And I mean, if we're going to open it up, we, we may as well talk it over and, and get things straightened out. Uh, well, what the motion is whether we are going to talk about it in this meeting. Or right. Um, go, go ahead, John. Well, we, you know, we we're, we can talk about this at any time. Right. Uh, and uh, the appropriate time would be, I think, before we sign another agreement. We can decide whether um, do a good study of this, and I think uh, it's been already been started, and. Um, you know, see whether it's working for both entities, and I, I think it is. Um, and I think this area needs uh, less duplication of services. I think that there should be cooperation amongst different entities for uh, services and equipment and whatever. It, I mean, it's better for everybody. You got anybody else got anything else? Well, and I, yeah, it's had a good start, but where's this, the proposed coming from? Is that just with these cooch meeting and talking about it already, or their, their board? I mean, it says current in contract and then proposed. Well, who Steve, proposed it? I went through the numbers yeah. and I tried to rationalize them, and that's what I've come up with that seems like a reasonable, from okay. my perspective, Okay, so it's numbers. based on... What actual? Based on the actual expenditures I went through, and I mean, I don't want to get into a lot of detail if we're not going to discuss this, but this is based on expenditures in previous years. Okay. 
Anybody else got anything? I think you really make an analysis of, uh, of what the cost should be versus what they are. If there's a difference, I think this type of analysis that Cindy did was good. I, I came in one day and asked her if she could uh, explain um, exactly the way she has it out here. It, it helped me a lot more. <coughs> it seems like there's a lot of uh, conversation here at the table that talks about one pain, not enough, um, and just numbers thrown out. I think what we need to do is sit down and actually determine that. We need Sitting here and making accusations, or I shouldn't say accusations, making statements in regards to we're not paying enough on salaries or uh, whatever item we want to talk about, really it's a waste of time unless we actually, as a board, sit down and really look it over. And I, uh, I think that's what needs to be done, really, instead of just talking about it all the time. You know what? I agree with, uh, um, so I'm calling you Bobo, sorry, Steve. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I understand that uh, those in the International Falls North Cooch, every time they flush their toilet, you know, there is a cost involved. With it. But um, those type of things really are a different issue than what, you know, what actually what the fair costs are for everybody. That's the way it's distributed at the end. So I really think we need just to sit down and really look at the whole picture and, and not just keep bringing in. Individual items. So that's just my opinion. Yeah. I'm going to call for a vote. No. Yes. 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 I think we need to look at this. I guess it's just a vote, isn't it? Um, I'll say yes right now, but we need to talk about it. I guess I'm going to say vote to Terry as I think it has to be looked at. Uh, so I'm going to vote yes. Okay, the motion was to take that off the agenda. For today, yes. Just, um, just to be clear on, for the minutes, do we have two no's, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So as a point of clarification, um, are we, do we want to talk about anything that's in the costing-wise or the East Coach packet? My understanding is based on that vote that we will not. But I did indicate at the last meeting that I would review it, so I just need to know where those lines are as far as the board's concerned. It should be reviewed, yes. I agree with that. But both of these is in one that's oh, saying no. Right, it's off the, it's off the agenda right now. There's nothing to stop it being brought up and put on the agenda. Without. Yeah, the later date. That's something yeah. else. Okay. So we're not going to talk about the East Cooch contract at all today. North Cooch, uh, okay, next one is May 16th, the North Cooch Board uh, meeting uh, minutes. Do I have a motion? So I'll move to approve the May 16th board minutes. I'll okay. second the motion. Right. Any discussion? Call for a vote. Yes. 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 I vote yes. Uh, May 31st, uh, call meeting minutes. So I'll move to approve the May 31st committee of the whole meeting minutes. I have a second. Okay. Second by Robert. Any discussion?
So what are we, uh, what are we going to do with, uh, because we were, we discussed how we were going to handle the committee, right now? That comes up later on in the agenda. Yeah. 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 Okay. Call for a vote. Yes. 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 I'm going yes. June divers disbursements for $96,624.34, including the blanket authorization payments. Have a motion? Motion to approve. Have a second? I'll make that. Second by Terry. Any discussion? Sure, question on page three at the top of the page. The, the Medicare Blue RX, what, what is that? The, what is that for? Three months? That's their uh, Medicare supplement. Don't know what it is either. It's for the retirees. It's for the retirees. For one retiree or? Uh, no, nope, it's for two sets of Question on page four, and that's the USA Blue Book. The sludge judge is replacement parts for the sludge judge that we had, which is a tool that they use to monitor the sludge and the clarifiers. Thank you. And there is a mistake on here on the Viking Industrial Center. The way the bills were written out, it was slightly confusing. So that total will actually only be $816.88, and that was for one personal uh, H2S or, or gas meter that we approved at the last meeting, and then an additional $60 for calibrations for the gas meters that they use when they go down into confined spaces. So it's just the way the Greg caught it when he looked at this this morning, um, just the way they sent the statements was kind of confusing until you actually look at it and we could consult with Greg to make sure we understood what they were indicating to us. So that number is going to change slightly. We have two of those monitors now, right? Yeah. We have a personal one and we have, a, a, we'll call it a handheld one. Right. I have a question on page three under the power. We've got a Continent uh, communications, is that for our phones and our and, and our computers, the whole works in here? In here, yep, phone and internet. And then we have Frontier in the plant. So that's one of those areas that we can optimize.
that new pickup come with all a uh, hitch? I see where Just the, uh, It came with the receiver hitch. We need to buy. We had to buy a ball for it. Just a. That's slides into the receiver. It had the towing package. It had the towing package on it. Yeah. And also we had uh, floor mats for it and the seat covers. That's what that stuff is. Oh, okay. It's the floor mats and the seat covers. I wouldn't let, let them get into the truck dirty Discussion on the financial. Call for a vote. Is there a motion? Yeah. yeah. I think we, we have yeah, a motion. Yeah. Uh, no. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I thought we were going to do that on new business. No, we can't. We can't do that. But this is just a motion as part of the disbursements. 
Okay, do we have a motion on uh Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, allow uh, to expenditure into the central pension fund per employee twenty dollars per month or per pay period under blanket authorization. Okay. Set. John seconds? Yeah. I'll second motion. That doesn't go up any. That's just flat. So next contract it might go to twenty five, right? Okay. And that's gonna be that's paid monthly. Current contract, yeah. What's that? That'll be paid monthly. Yes. Going forward, yes. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Call for a vote? No. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. I vote yes. Okay. Financial report. So I'll move to approve the financial report. Second by John. So that payment that uh, employees are making to pay back their health insurance, that doesn't show anywhere in here, does it? Is it $93,000 less this year than last year? Last year there was an issue with, if I recall, transferring these coach money. When it, it was the bank took it out of our coach instead of research. Yeah, so then when we put it back in for the books, we had to put it into miscellaneous income last year. So that's just a bookkeeping thing. It, that there was 99000 in there last year, it's not a real income. that came out mistakenly of our account and then so we had to show how it went back and what would uh, typically miscellaneous income what would that be where would this income be coming from uh, typically when they take it out of the employee's paycheck for the insurance, it comes off their paycheck. So that goes in at like $348, is that what it is? It's a little more than that. Yeah. Um, if we got a reimbursement from somebody, or a rebate, we got a rebate, then it, then it goes under this way. Generally, it should be a fairly small account. Shay has a dumped a bit here this year? They don't. They just they get to pay a month behind, so they have to pay here in June. The end of June, is that when they pay then? They get to pay they get to pay the previous month the next month. And Crandall gets I think they're two months. So 
Well, that's cheap. $20, is for how many gallons? No, well, that's just their um, permit fee that they pay. Oh, so they haven't paid for any dumping at all? Nope, they just started the end of May. Oh. So when they do dump, they, are it based on uh, gallons or is it just a per visit? $27 per thousand gallons each dumper is charged. Okay. I think he's got a thousand gallon uh, tank on that trailer he also for the truck. That's all he does. He's still hauling with that trailer and with that tank on it? Yeah. And I have a question on page four of that uh, item four eighty four. That HRA, is that all done now? I see that Jeff and Tommy still have a balance of some money there. What's going no, on? No, that was paid out. That was paid out, excuse me, at the beginning of the year just because of the way yeah. the cycle went. Okay, out. that's that fact. So that's all done. Good. So nobody has any money in their HRA fund, right? That's correct. Any more discussion? Star CD quotes from Bremer, True Star, and Border State. So, as you recall, we have, um, we'll call it 200,000 at True Star and 200,000 at Border. It's 200,000 to change at each one. Um, we're not earning much money on them right now. They are in money market accounts. So, I went out for quotes from all three agencies that you have in front of you Bremer, True Star, and Border. Uh, Bremer, far and away, gives the best rates, without a doubt. These rates are rather volatile right now. There's a lot of uncertainty in the markets. They're changing. I didn't get uh, the quote from Bremer until at the very end of the day yesterday because the rates are changing. And by the time I make a decision with what we want to do, the rates may change again. Um, but there's roughly 420-ish thousand that we need to do something with. Um, if we go with border state, we can only put a maximum of 250000 in there because of FDIC insurances. Um, True Star um, kind of has the same issue, but they can they have insurance that will cover if we want to put the whole 420 in there. If we go with Bremer, they would basically um, write a, a rider, if you will, onto the letter of credit insurance policy that we already have with them just to cover this in addition. So I just need to know where everybody thinks that we should go. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, John. Uh, has TrueStar indicated that they're possibly be changing their rates? Um, no, you know, the only one that told me that Bremer, um, or excuse me, the only one that told me that the rates were even volatile was Bremer. I don't know what the difference is. True Start did indicate to me that um, on the 36 month and the and the 60 month that they are above board on that one for us. They gave us a little bit better deal than than they should. Have. Well, not than we should have, but um, they're giving us a little bit of a kick on that benefit. And they are covering the insurance costs for us if we give them more than 250 thousand. Um, one interesting thing with Bremer, um, if we go into say we go into a 60-month CD with them, any of the interest that comes out of there, 
we would not have to reinvest into the CD. We could take it out and put it into a money market account, and then as, as that money gets big enough, um, then we could take that and invest it in something separate or put it back into one of our other money market accounts if we'd like. But that only pays out annually, I believe. Um. Right, John. Is there any reason why we can't put this money in long term in 60 months? I don't see any reason why. I mean, we have talked as a as a whole money market strategy that we would take the money that we currently have at Bremer and do a bit more of a, a laddered investment strategy. Right now, everything yeah. we have is in money market accounts there, and it, we are we are earning considerably more interest than we did before we did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think at some point we do have enough money in the banks that in the bank that we yeah, do. Yeah, I mean, who knows that. what's going to happen with interest rates, and it's going to be a lag no matter what because yeah. it's the nature of the beast. Right. And uh, so. And TrueStar did indicate to me that they keep that money in house. So if we did go into say a sixty month with them, and there was. A, a compelling reason, say we had some sort of a failure in the plant or something that we needed to get that money out, that they would allow us to take that money out without penalty. Who was this? True Star. True Star. True Star offered that up. Oh. But we couldn't just, we'd have to demonstrate that we had the need for it. We couldn't just say, oh, we can get a better rate down. Right. So and so thing. Um, do you want a motion? I mean, um, Mr. Chairman, do you want a motion to, or just to allow the Director to do what? You know. I need to make a motion on it and see. I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I think that we should. You want to make a motion to uh, allow the director to decide on the best for the district? Is that how you want to handle? Is that what you're? Uh, well, at? I think that um, yeah, we can just say true start. Um, I would like to just say true star leave her off the hook in case. Why, why were you saying that? I thought Bremer was the one. Bremer actually gives us the best rates. Oh, to Bremer did. Yeah. yeah. And there's no penalties uh, if we can for Bremer? Uh, I have to confirm with that. I can't remember. I don't know what she told me that. Well, no, I don't. Well, I, I thought the, the no penalty was with Bremer. No, no penalties with true oh, star. Oh. Yeah, we have a second on that. Uh, what, what's the motion? You made a motion to let the director. Uh, I prefer for the board to tell me what. Yeah, she did. Well, yeah. I think. Well, I agree. Well, I agree that the board should be. You know, I mean. I think the board should make this decision. I guess you look at it. There is quite a bit of difference in uh, the interest rates of these. Well, Border State and True Star are comparable, I'd say. And right. Bremer is kind of in a league of its own. And True Star was the one that would allow the interest to be taken out in annually? No, that's Bremer. Bremer. Oh. But Bremer does, or excuse me, but True Star pays interest quarterly. See, but Bremer's only got a quarter percent did. higher than uh, the other ones. Quarter percent is that. We also have to determine the length of the uh, certificate also with me. Correct. Yeah. Not just which one to go to. I think that's important. We have to really understand um, future needs in order to go with 60 months. That's a long That's a long time to go without pulling money out of the secrets. What's that? Pick, pick the money you got left over there, 200 grand. Well, as part of this conversation, I'd refer you back to um, one of the pages in the financial packet. It's the single page one. At the top it says uh, North Cooch Area Sanitary District CKG slash SDG S slash investments, and it shows you how much money we actually have in money market accounts currently. That's as we're having this strategy conversation and how long we want to tie up money. This is actually kind of an important key in this because you can see that right now we don't have money tied up in long-term investments in anything. That's one thing that we need to look at doing, figure out as a whole, like take a full-on approach to our money that we have in the bank and look at the investments and figure out 
how we actually want to do this. Um, I know East Cooch has taken on a ladder strategy where they have different investments at different lengths of time. And that's something that Bremer has talked to us with the majority, well, we do have the majority of our money with Bremer. So that's something that we can look at with them. We don't have to move on this 420000 right now. The question was asked at the last meeting. We are aware that this money is just sitting in a money market account. So if we want to take a look at that 420000 as a bigger picture with all the money that we do have sitting with Bremer right now, we can do that if that's an approach that the board would prefer to take. Okay. Uh, do you well, want to I, I would like to find out if, like, Bremer, I'd say, if there is no penalty to her for early withdrawal, okay. um, well, as well as with Border State, I don't know. I mean, you mentioned True Star. There's no penalty, but yeah, I'll withdraw my motion if I did, in fact, make one. Um, no, I don't think it was second. I don't think the motion was ever really made. Okay, we're going to look at this a little bit more then, huh? That's the consensus here. Yeah, if we don't have to move on it, I mean, I don't know if we... It's up to the board how urgent you want to get this into an investment-making account, or an uh, interest-making account. Yeah. We have many other things on our plate here. And this is something that maybe we want to have um, our finance committee sit down next time the Bremer ladies in town and go through this and talk to her as a holistic strategy. Because this, it's not something that I can easily explain to you in, you know, the 10 minutes during a meeting once a month that we can talk about. This is, there's a, a, a fair chunk of money in there that we need to make sure that we're making smart decisions on. So the more educated the board is on it as well, or at least a few members of the board who are on What are we getting for interest now? On what? The money we do have invested, none of it's invested at this time. Everything with Bremer is in money market accounts right now, except for whatever the working money is in the checking account. And what are we getting for, for, for right now for? 0.55. Yeah, that's not well, that's considerable compared to what we were making earlier in the year, right? Because we made a change there. Who's on the finance committee? Everybody. I don't know. Well, that's something that we're going to talk about in a little bit, but I don't know if we ever made appointments to the Finance Committee. I think you are now, for one. <laughs> it sounded like a volunteer thing. <laughs> you didn't know you were on it, did you? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you did that meeting you missed. I was wondering if at one point there was a, uh, before I started, I saw on TV that, that, that was voted that everybody would be on every well, I think that's going to come up to review. Oh, right. Okay. I think here it's going to be a review right here. So, do we just want okay. to hold tight on this and, and take a bigger strategic approach to all of take, our money? Is that what I'm kind of hearing? Yeah, take a breath. Deep breath. I got these together because somebody did ask last time, and I think it was the previous meeting that we made, we made a change with order. So. Good. Okay, so we'll hold off and then maybe we'll get a finance committee to sit with the banks and we can see what we do. For the record, Bremer's probably the one that we need to keep the bulk of our money with just because of the way that they can insure our money because we're a municipality. It's limited as to what True Star and, and Border can do for us from that perspective. We don't have to vote on that today then. No, we're not taking any action. I think in the past we would like to spread it around, right? Well, I think it comes draw. back to that $250,000 of insurance that yeah. FDIC provides. Yeah. And I think after I heard that, that made sense why we had only about $200,000 with other mm -hmm. banks. Mm -hmm. uh, director's one year anniversary. I don't know how many of you guys want to. Go ahead, John. I would so move to increase the director's well, hourly per week to 20 hours a week instead of 15, and that her salary goes to $30,000 per year. This would include the increase of hours plus a small wage increase. 
and that the contract be for one year and it would be reviewed at the end of that year. That's, your, that's the motion you're making? That's the motion I'm making. And this is because of the minutes of May 31st, 2017 COW special meeting. We have a second on that? A second there. Second by Steve. Is it up to 20 hours or? 20 hours as needed. To work 15 and up to 20 hours? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Her present contract is 15 hours as needed. The new contract would be 20 hours as needed. You see a small, also a sm small um, salary increase. Is there a dollar, is there a percentage? Of, um, uh, Cindy, do you have those figures? 26.92 now. 26.92? Yeah, 21,000 a year. Uh, $30 would be um, at 20 hours. I have just for 15 hours, mm -hmm. but that would be 23,000 for <coughs> So the 20 hours would be what? 20, 30. 20 hours a week for 30,000 works out to 28.85 an hour. Yeah. yeah. So I, think, I think she was low to begin with. I don't know. So the 2682 is not going to move? That's going to stay at what's her hour and rate going to be now? We were out 30. She proposed thirty dollars an hour, and that's what we were paying the interim director thirty dollars no, no. an hour. Don proposed thirty thousand a year, right. equivalent, which is twenty eight eighty five. Oh, oh okay. I thought it was thirty dollars an hour. Sorry. So which was the motion? Thirty dollars? No, thirty thousand an hour years. or the. Don made a motion for t up to twenty hours for equivalent of thirty thousand a year, which is twenty eight eighty five an hour. And you had mentioned before banking anything additional. Is that still a go? In the COW meeting? I'm banking. sorry. In the committee, the whole meeting, it was mentioned that you would possibly bank anything if you worked over 30, over the 20, 20 hours a week, she could bank those hours. Is that still? Yes. So that's part of the motion, too? Yes. To make anything over 20 hours. I guess I just assume, myself, I just assume if she works 25 hours or 24 hours, we pay her for that. I mean, who's keeping track? Is there, is all employees got comp time right now? Uh, yes. That's a fair statement, yes. Huh? That's, what, 60 hours a year? Uh, 40 hours. 40. Yeah. One week. Well, should there be a ceiling on that? I mean, uh, uh, yes. keep it at part time. I, I know I made an original motion that it was uh, up to 30 hours, which would be. I would do the up to. That would be my preference, up to 20. Mm -hmm. But at, a, at an hourly rate. Okay. You're talking a lot of money, then. No, up to well, 20. Up to 20 yeah, you're right, but he's talking 30 hours. Oh, that was one of the original conversations yeah. in the car. Well, anyway, we got a motion, right? Did we have a second on that motion? Did we have the motion? Steve right? did. Motion by Billy, right. second by Blair, to have director work up to 20 hours a week and pay her $30,000 annually and to bank her hours for one year and reviewed at that point. We should actually, I think, change that from 30000 to the actual hourly rate so that we're clear on that. Because yeah. if, if we do it as, if we say 30000 that implies a salary position, which means that I wouldn't be paid yeah. per hour. Yeah. So I think we should refer to an hourly rate on that. If that's a pay per hour. Yeah. The reason being what? If you actually give an annual salary, 
it yeah. would imply that I have some level of entitlement to that annual salary. I think doing it because of the fact as well that we're going up to 20 hours. So I think if we actually do it as an hourly rate, we, it's more clear as to what the actual expectations are. Does that make sense? You guys really want to go a whole year on no, this circle? That's, Mr. Chairman, yeah, that's a comment that I was going to make is that uh, if we could do a review in six months. Yeah, and you can do a job uh, evaluation. I think go with the six months rather than a year because you never know. <laughs> Can't we do six months, do a review for six months, and then think about this again in six months? We need a performance review before we admit this is this will be a drastic change. Right. Yeah. Why don't you hold off on increasing the salary? Not that you don't deserve it, but do the performance review first. Then you have something to base it off of. Well. Because you're gonna up the salary and then go to the pharmacy She's been here a year and she's done an excellent job. She's, she's, we've that. had numerous uh, issues that had to be addressed. Um, she's worked with the attorneys, um, I don't know how many, half dozen different attorneys fixing the, all the fires that needed to be put out. So as far as the six months, I, I just she say I'd just like to leave the original motion the for a year. We got a whole year. I, I think this part performance review. I mean, who's going to do it? How you know? How's, we aren't set up for that. Type of well, thing. absolutely. We don't not. have an HR department and all that stuff. Keisha, so, one way of clarity on yours. What I walked into, or what I was offered, was not what I walked into. For the record. No, that could. It became much. You more knew a little bit, though, that there was going to be a little bit of spending. Someday I'll tell you about my first day. Go ahead, Don. Cindy. Instead of thirty thousand dollars a year, you want an hourly salary, and that would be what twenty eight. The equivalent of the thirty thousand is twenty eight. Twenty eight eighty five. I believe so. Yes. I would so move to change my motion to a hourly salary, if the second would also. Yeah, I mean, and it might not. If you're up, up to 20, you might not work 20 in a week, right. so it might not be 30,000 a year, right. so that's good. I think I it's just a little bit clearer. Than I don't think you want to put hourly salary, hourly rate, maybe. Yeah. Yes. It's not a salary. Right. right, hourly. And that's my motion then. And still one year done? Still one year. I guess the only problem is I, I really have a problem with comp time. I just soon pay the employees rather than bank, because uh -huh. last time that comp time got to be a holy mess. Well, the comp time became a mess before because we cashed it in for them and turned it into cash. I understand that, but I mean, it just got to the point where nobody knew what, as long as we're going to go with comp time, then maybe comp time, I know it's not probably not the place to put it, but maybe uh, the board should be told who's got comp time and how much comp time they have. You have no idea how much comp time is being accumulated. Huh? You can just go ask. Is there a limit on how much you can accumulate? The contract says 40, 40 hours. hours. How many hours, Robert? Four. Maximum 40 in a year. No Maximum carry. 40 in a bank. In a bank, right. Yeah. No carryover. Right. More than 40, yeah. And then if you do get the 40, you're paid for it after that? Or you just no, you lose your choice. choice. No, you'd be paid overtime. So they get a yeah. chance, they get the opportunity yeah. when they have overtime, hours that they're yeah. eligible for, that they can either be paid overtime or else they can put it into their comp. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, I don't, I don't think that's legal. Uh, my understanding of the Fair Labor Standards Act is that um, employees uh, have a hourly rate and they're paid for those hours that they work uh, during a pay period. Um, and if you want to have uh, comp time, it has to be taken within that pay period and cannot be banked. So it has to be utilized in the same pay period that it is earned. 
uh, the contract went through two separate legal teams and neither came up with that. Uh, I think we ought to check with the government then. The county, we, we carry our comp time hourly and we can, you know, if the balance changes month, from month to month then nothing ever, we don't have to use that comp in the same pay period. That might retain the salary employees. Kind of. I know in that county, the salary employees couldn't carry. No, then you get over the same area. You could have comp, mm -hmm. internal comp time, but you had to use it within, within uh, the paper. Well, I know the city uh, did away with it, and it's called now they just kind of call it flex time. I mean, mm -hmm. but you have to use it within that period of time. Mm -hmm. Hardly. I mean, we have a choice. You can take overtime or you can take comp at time and a half. Who we'll keep track of your half. comp time? The county administrator's <coughs> office. So you have to report to them whenever you accumulate comp time? We, have, we, we identify it on our... Uh, time card? Time card, yeah. Department head is supposed to keep an eye on that. Yeah. Sure, I'd also like to know what, what has changed uh, since the uh, executive director has been hired that requires an additional five hours a week. The, uh, certainly the taking on a new position, uh, everyone has uh, puts in more hours because it's a learning curve. Uh, generally that learning curve takes uh, 12 to 24 months. I could see staying at uh, 15 hours for, for one more year and then reviewing it, but I don't see uh, making a change at this time to 20 hours. Sure. I, I, I kind of agree because a lot of fires have been kind of slowly been uh, put off the table, but this is not like she's going to work 20 hours every week. It's up to 20. It's part of a, a more um, comparable pack salary package for her that she that she does deserve. I mean, you know, from what she's had to go through in the last year, she was not being compensated. I, I believe. I do believe we have a motion on the table. I guess uh, my final question is so. We're going to, I mean, I don't have it. We're going to raise uh, her salary almost $2 an hour. Now, is North Coochie all of that $2, almost $2 an hour, or do we pass some on to eat? How does that work? I mean, we keep giving raises and stuff, and I mean, uh, is this passed on to East Cooch, part of it? They would pay literally 10% of it, or 9.85% of it. It goes right back to the flow calculation. All expenses yeah. throughout the district are evenly distributed based on flow. East Cooch pays 10%? 9.85 or something like that, I think, this year. What does Rainier pay? 1.29? Yeah, something like that. 1.8-ish? I'd have to pull up the spreadsheet for sure to find out. But Rainier is typically less than 2%. East Cooch is typically right around 10. Based on flow. Based on flow. And International Falls is usually right under 90%. Based on five year flow averages. That's a total different discussion, though. I understand that. The only thing is, you keep giving, uh, and it, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not against raises. But if, if North Cooch is going to keep eating all these raises and stuff we're getting, I mean, is some of this being passed on to the other entities? Well, North Cooch isn't an entity. First I understand time. they're not, but I said the other entities, Rainier and East Cooch. It's split evenly, just like the light bills, the power or the gas bills, the the employees' health insurance. It's all split the same way. I mean, I look at it, it's no different than the employees. You want to keep the employees happy, and you want to keep the director happy, and, you know, she can't continue to go without any raises at all. I mean, 
Well, Mr. Chairman, I think my um, opinion is that the more hours we give to the executive director, the less we're going to have to hire out to somebody else, engineers, whatever. So she provides very good value to us because otherwise we might have to have a lot of that work done by somebody that's more, much more expensive. How can you prove that? How can you measure that? I, I can't. It's just from experience being around. Uh, uh, she does, uh, she's able to do studies, whatever. That's just an opinion, Bob. Well, and there is one specific example where we need to fully update the policy book. And as we finish doing the union negotiations, uh, our legal, or our labor lawyer indicated that that's something that her firm could do. So that would be something that, um, you know, she would have her staff take on. I'm sure her staff costs considerably more than what I do per hour. So you've been working on the policy book? Haven't gotten that far yet, nope. But it's on the to-do list. The policy book, I... The one we have now is just almost garbage. That's correct, and that's why it needs to be revamped, based on the union contract that we have. Maybe we pay the fiddler and just get it up, get it, get it over with. The book is absolutely useless to tell you the truth. Okay. Who's the fiddler? Huh? Who's the fiddler? Who they just hire somebody to do it? I don't know. I mean, how do we just keep letting things go, 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 and never get done? I mean, sometimes you have to spend a dollar to get an extra dollar to get things done. I mean, I'd like to see that policy book uh, updated. I mean, if you guys want to spend money, that's a good place to spend it. What are your next goals? What are you going to be doing? The big one that's going to be coming online is going to be the I&I &I project. The engineer was here last week. So he's familiar with the plan. He's going to start working on those. The policy book is on my radar. Um, it's kind of my to-do list here. Because we need to think carefully about giving raises because the money, the raises that we give do come out of people and families' budget. You know, yeah, absolutely. Just, <laughs> you know what I mean? You have, you ever at the blue, have you ever looked at the blue book? No, not yet. That's a policy book. I understand that. But any decisions and raises that we make, we need you to consider. You know, a lot of this comes out of the family's disposable income. Well, a lot of I people agree. don't have that much. I mean, we have a lot. I don't complain on my water and sewer bill at all, but there's a lot of uh, elderly people that it really makes a difference in their income. Well, We've got a Chairman. motion on the table. Well, Mr. Chairman, there's been no justification given for the Reasons? increase in hours. Just an opinion and uh, easy to give away somebody else's money. Do we give the salary? or the hourly wage and then come back on something else to make up for it. That's what I would do at work. But, you know what I mean? The, does everybody get the phone communication? Uh, no, Stacy doesn't. The employees get 140, I get 75. That's what I'm down for. Go ahead, Don. Again, uh, if you go back to the year, the meeting that we had on May 31st, this was all discussed. The recommendation was to increase it to 20 hours. I think uh, it, it has been discussed here that the, the, the executive director over the past year has exemplified her position and that uh, the wage that is being set at twenty-eight eighty-five per hour is warranted. 
I would agree with Don. We already went through this once, you know, since I've been on the board uh, and prior to that, it seems like uh, <laughs> we've had a lot more meetings, you know, than in years past. And, uh, you know, I, I don't see why we should, you know, relitigate this whole thing over again. I guess the only thing, I, I guess we have to start looking at to start looking at wages and stuff and how we're doing it. And I think we just get pretty uh, pretty laxed in how we do it. I mean, whatever you guys want to do, do, I guess. And I guess we'll call for a vote. No. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Yes. No. Review the motion of uh, for call. And I guess we uh, we have a uh, do we have a motion to open that? Yep. Because based on the bylaws on the last page that's in your packet there, page five of the bylaws, article seven. These bylaws may be amended or revoked by resolution of two thirds of the members of the board at a duly called for meeting, which all members have been notified in writing the proposed bylaw change prior to the meeting. That never happened, so when we voted on it, we didn't follow procedure, so I don't think that that motion is valid. simple reason I think you have your HR committees and everything that's done has to go through the board and I think three people and I don't know if you I don't know if you can have four legally but I I, I think if you I'll just use one example is negotiations if eight people can't go to a negotiation if you have your HR committee go there and uh, do the negotiating or whatever, and then bring it back to the board. I think if eight people go there, I think it gets pretty, yeah. I think it's hard to get something accomplished with eight people rather than four. Go ahead, John. I think, Mike, I think what happened is that um, there were some members that were upset. They didn't feel like they were part of the process. So that's how we kind of got started on this. If they weren't on the committee itself, um, they felt that they did not have input. So that's, that's kind of why we started it. So I, I think it's well, pretty much up to the chairman, isn't it, to... Uh, my personal opinion is, I, I, and I'm not using this to pick on anybody, 
It's just like we did the negotiations with the employees to move them into the union. Yes, we had an HR committee that did it. I, I thought it moved too fast. We never did come back and have meetings with the whole to discuss exactly what, what the HR committee was doing. And I think if you use, use your HR committees and then bring it back to the whole before any decision is made, I think you get stuff done quicker. I personally do, and I mean, and I mean, I, a lot of the stuff that uh, we do is, I think, should be uh, HR committees. But with all due respect to the board, this isn't a question of whether we go forward with the cows or not. It's a question of the fact that we didn't do that right. We didn't do it right. No. So that resolution isn't valid. So going forward. We, this is something that we want to do, then that means that one of the board members needs to actually write that up, distribute it to the board members in advance of the next meeting, and then it can be reviewed again. Well, go ahead, John. Go, well, can't we wait till the issue comes up, decide at the meeting whether we want how many members on the committee? Absolutely, and if that's legal. Yeah, I think sure. uh, the chairman can call from time to time, it says. Uh, and it can be any number, I believe, any number, uh, so as long as you comply with open meeting laws and all that. Well, basically, yeah. you're just going back to the way you operated before that motion was in place. Yeah. However you did it before. We did it with, it, if I remember right, uh, I, I, I'm sure we did it with the HR committees. Uh, I think Chopper could answer that question, or Doug. Didn't we used to do it that way, Doug? We did it both ways. Yeah. You know. Do you want to uh, add something to the uh, bylaws, being more specific, so we know from in the future? Uh, well, again, going forward, that has to be yeah. somebody put together yeah. or something in writing yeah, we'll and to to distribute it. So basically, this was an informational thing saying that resolution that was brought a couple months ago is not valid. Motion. Motion, sorry. The one that all committees shall be a committee of the whole. Yeah, yep. I just strike that out yeah, of our just memories and. Uh, yeah. And just for the record, as I've been going through various documents in the office, I'm finding that not necessarily well, resolutions that have passed before are not attached to the bylaws. There are random resolutions floating around this office, which is a problem that we need to start compiling them and putting them with the bylaws, just as an FYI. Do you have access to people you know where they're all at? Or would we be missing some? I, I just know that I have a copy of the bylaws <coughs> and I've seen various resolutions floating around. I don't know. We need to start looking for it and see if there's a nice neat little folder that has right. bylaws and all the resolutions in there. Yeah. because. Otherwise, we need to go back through all the meeting minutes and make sure that we have all of them. But again, that's one of those project things. I don't know historically how it's been done, so we need to look into that and find out for sure. Because to me, any time we have a copy of the bylaws, it should have all the resolutions with it as well. I We don't need a motion on this, so let's just. That was more of an information. Mm -hmm. That's why I make a motion. No, we don't need a motion on it. And I guess the next one is the INI update. And that's the Cindy? Yeah, so on INI, um, AE2S was here last week. They spent just over a day here, uh, most of that in the plant, um, going through. They looked at everything with Greg in the plant, um, took some notes. They collected some documents while they were here. Um, so that is in motion with them. We're starting down the path. Uh, we did sign a contract with them. I guess that was since the last <coughs> meeting. Um, but I did send all of you a copy on that and informed you as, about that. Uh, John Thomas from the MPCA called last week or the week before and would like us to set a meeting with him. So I also need direction from the board. Um, when, John called, he asked where we would like to have the meeting and who would like to be involved. So here's the scenario. John Thomas is in Duluth. Our lawyer is in Duluth. Our engineer is in the cities. One of the MBCA's 
guys is coming from Detroit Lakes. We're up here. Um, from from BE to us's perspective, they think it's very valuable to have our lawyer involved in the next session with the MPCA. It's kind of why we hired him for a negotiation strategy. Um, John Thomas has indicated that from MPCA's perspective, they don't necessarily have to have board members involved in these negotiations, but they would welcome them if they'd be so inclined. So we need to figure out, first of all, would it just be me representing the board and reporting back? And I told him that if that was the case, well, regardless of if it was just me or if it was me and board members, we'd need to bring it back to our board, whatever we negotiated, to make sure that it was okay with the board. Or would we like to have a couple members of the board go down and meet with the MPCA for the next round of negotiations? So I need, first of all, to figure out who would go. From there, we need to figure out where we would go whether they come up here. If they come up here, that means we have to pay for our lawyer to travel and our engineer to travel from the cities and when we would do this. And I also have letters from the City of International Falls um, with their concerns or considerations for the schedule of compliance. I received a preliminary, or I received an initial email or a letter from East Cooch um, I encourage them to go back and revisit what they wrote with uh, different types of perspective. Same with Rainier. They had some legal language that they put into their letter, and I also asked them to go back and revisit it based on timelines and such. Go so, ahead, Steve. I will start to review that AE2S contract, right? Correct. Okay. And I didn't That's sign why it just until, got signed. Okay. Yep. All right. Good. He well, had that, to make a few changes. You know, and you're looking at a uh, meeting where? In Duluth? It really depends. I mean, that's up to the board. If we have three board members and myself involved in it, then maybe it makes sense for us to stay here and have everybody else come up here. It kind of makes sense to go to Duluth, but from a financial perspective, it doesn't make sense for our, our, our engineer to come up from the cities and three or four of us go down to Duluth. So if we had board members, I'd be encouraging everybody to come up here and to do the meeting here, but it's where you want to spend the money. Do you want to have the engineer travel? and pay the engineer to travel or to the, from the cities to Duluth or do you want attorney to the, yeah the attorney to come from Duluth up here and the engineer to come all the way from the cities you're saying the one guy comes from Detroit Lakes that's the MPCA guy yeah, we don't, they don't so the, do we pay when he travels do we pay him mileage no nope. nope. we only have to worry about our lawyer and your engineer engineer and then whatever the representatives of north coach do we can't do a, a phone uh, conference on this or um they said that they could like if we need to patch somebody in but for negotiations it's much better to sit face to face and that was kind of the impression of the engineer as well he said we could do it but you lose something if you're not sitting in the same room and if you need to step out and talk it's not the same Go ahead, Don. This is negotiations between North Cooch and, MPCA. and MPCA. To, to nail down the schedule of compliance. Schedule that, that has nothing to do with Rainier and East Cooch at this time. Well, and International Falls. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. We are getting their input into this because they have to live with that schedule of compliance as well. And if there's any milestones in that schedule of compliance that are not met, there's fines that will be levied. So we would likely pass a portion of those on to the entities, depending on who's at fault with not achieving those milestones. Speaking for East Cooch, we have, at our last meeting, hired an engineering firm that is drafting a letter that you required for negotiations between North Cooch and MPCA. Yep. So I need that letter before we have the negotiations. Well, I have not heard from our engineer, engineering firm as to whether they would have their letter to you in time for a meeting with MPCA. He is aware that this deadline is coming and that I will need that letter before I meet with the MPCA. 
He's fully aware of that, Don. Is the deadline been set? The deadline for what? For our meeting with John Thomas? Uh, no. I explained to him exactly where we were at, that I had to go back and get clarification on a few of these letters, that we had a few delays getting the contract in place. And he indicated that, you know, before the end of June would be ideal if we had to go into July. It's not the end of the world as long as we're making progress. You don't need anything at this meeting now. I so, need. Yeah, you got to figure out. Are you going to let Cindy represent? Or are you going to? Does East Cooch and Rainier have a have have a? No, they don't. East Cooch, Rainier, and International Falls. You have to lump all three of them together. It's only North Cooch and the MPCA that are negotiating. MP, or, uh, International Falls, Rainier, and East Cooch cannot meet with the MPCA on this matter. Oh. Well, Cindy should go. Well, yeah, but I mean, uh, what do you guys want to do? I mean, uh, I don't know very much about it, so I'm definitely out of the equation. I don't know if you want to send two or three other people there, I mean, and... Uh, I mean, it's going to be a 10-hour day, probably, at least. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, Thank you, Cindy. Cindy, if nobody else can go, Cindy could communicate uh, with a board member or two. She could. Uh, mm -hmm. I can send uh, emails when I'm gone. If that, I mean, if we come to that. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, our engineer and our, our lawyer are going to guide us through a lot of this. They're going to have a much better understanding of what's reasonable for milestones. They've been through this before, so they're going to look at a lot of that and say, we can live with this, we cannot live with that. Um, so they're going to have the expertise in this. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we tell the MPCA that uh, we want the meeting held here at our office and request that our attorney and engineering firm be notified to be here and that those members of the board that can attend can be present. You can't have more than four because of quorum. Right. I'll second that motion. I, I don't think the uh, all we have to do is put up a notice that uh, the board will be meeting and we can... I'm not sure if we can do that considering it's negotiations with the MPCA. I, I don't believe that that it can be a posted open meeting is my understanding. Well, call our attorney. I can do that. I don't see why it can't, uh, members of the board can't be present. They can, but as long as we don't have a quorum. Has been my understanding as I go through this with the MPCA. So a board member can't be there if he say he's in the audience. I will confirm with the attorney, but my understanding is is that you typically can't have more than a quorum. Or you can't have a quorum, but I will confirm that. Go ahead, Steve. The whole purpose is to keep the public from attending because the minute you notice it then you can have a quorum right and I but then the public perfect. can come in well as soon as you open that meeting you can close it for attorney client privilege or whatever let me confirm with overstar yeah. on that and i'll give you if it's noticed i think you can have more you can have a quorum and i think you can close it at any time for attorney client privilege i know the county courts did that with their their forestry Certainly having them here uh, would be the best case, but it's going to be the most expensive option for us. Well, well, yeah. I don't know that it is. I mean, if, if we really don't know what's going on as a board, yeah. I don't know that that's yeah. going to Good information for everybody. Pay the expense to see yeah. it. Yeah, well, here. we're just going to have to do it then, huh? Is that how you want to handle it? You want to have the engineer and the attorney, uh, John Thomas? 
from here. Well, we're not paying for John Tyler. We understand to have the East Coach and Rainier reps excuse themselves well, at this meeting. Well, if you did that, you'd have to have the International Falls ones as well. No. Yes. North Coach. Oh, North Coach. Well, this is between NBC and North um, Coach, and I don't understand why they made that rule, because all these entities there are players in this it's too. It's because, um, because of the fact that that the permit is held by North Cooch, and so this is a legal matter between North Cooch and the MPCA. So if, if you talk to the attorney, he could say, okay, all the I Falls, East Cooch, Rainier reps can't attend. So it would be you and the MPCA and the attorney anyway. Well, and that's where I have to understand where this, we have a unique board, right? Because yeah. we have city officials or board officials that hold seats on the North Cooch oh. board. So I'm not completely sure where that line goes, but when I talked to John Thomas before, using Don as an example, because he was the one that was involved with the board before as a board official for East Cooch, what I was told was as long as they wear their North Cooch hats, we're okay. You got, a, you got a hand for them? Yeah. Uh, we got to get moving. What do you, we yeah. can just sit here and discuss this all day. I mean, so what do you guys want to do? Is, so I will try to set up a meeting here uh, with the MPCA. I will um, find a date that's suitable for all involved, which may not be as easy. Yeah, that's not going to be easy. Uh, and then I'll also double check with Mr. Overstar to understand how a quorum plays into the negotiations with the MPCA. Okay. Mr. Chair, we have a motion on the table. Yeah. That we would second it in that regard. So. What I, is the motion? Can we get it back? Motion by Anderson, second by Billy, to have a meeting with the MPCA held at MPCA hold meeting at North Cooch and have engineer and lawyer come to International Falls. Okay. Call for a vote. Yes. 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 I vote yes. Okay, review uh, East Cooch and North Cooch co contract and resolutions. Nope. That's not on the agenda. That's not on the, huh? That's off. That was That's off, right? Yeah. Okay. Operator report. Mr. Chairman, board members, uh, just a few things here. The flow meter for lift station one that we talked about, we got that on order. And what we did is we ordered one that has a submergence rated cable on it. Last time we talked about maybe sealing these meter pits and coming up with some pricing to seal the meter pits so we don't get water in them. Well, we uh, priced out a flow meter that has a submergence rated cable and the flow meter can be submerged if in an emergency it's not gonna hurt them hurt the flow meter if water ever did get submerged in the meter pit. So we felt that was a better route to go. For a couple hundred bucks we ordered that one and now we shouldn't have to worry about sealing that meter pit at all. We'll just keep a sump pump in it and keep an eye on it and it uh, probably it's a better route to go. That way we, we never have trouble with it. At least it's not going to fail on us. So that's what we uh, ended up getting ordered. Uh, also General Heating was here and did some tune-up on our boilers. You can see on the disbursements there what they charged and we called him and questioned him. And he came up for the school and we asked him how he come up with them figures and stuff. He says he prorates his hourly rate, how much time he spends here and over there. If he spends more here, it costs us a little bit more, which he spent about two hours here. He was only over there 20 minutes, so I got that all confirmed with him, how he come up with all that. So. Couldn't really argue much more with him on that. I thought it was pretty high, but he did some tune up on the boiler, he changed the low pressure switch out and checked uh, gas and stuff and exhaust gas temperatures and <coughs> everything else he had to do. Uh, also, maintenance, we've done some little working on some maintenance out there at the lake. We did replace some heat tape that we had to get in. Uh, a service line for a grinder station and Jeff took one of the summer help out there and worked on that and that worked out good he got that all installed 
Uh, last winter, you remember we had that emergency at the station four where the piping broke off on a duplex grinder station. A couple weeks ago, we went down, we got everything measured up, and all the stainless piping is ordered, and we just received it all yesterday. We're going to try to get all that piping in that station as soon as we can. And that's original galvanized piping from back in 84, so the stuff is pretty rough shape, and we have to get that replaced. Uh, also, we're starting to run our gravity belt thickener. The sludge out of the digesters is being run through the gravity belt thickener. We're starting to put sludge in that storage tank out here. So we're running that two, three days a week. We've been doing that. And also, we got two summer help kids this summer, and they've both been working out real well. We got one of them at times going with one of our full time guys, depending on what we're doing, or they're on grounds, and one of them is specifically geared toward taking care of the grounds. Uh, toxicity testing, our yearly toxicity testing that's required by our permit. We had, uh, the last time I told you we were doing that, we did complete that, a four-day test, and we received uh, results back that we had a passing grade on that. So <clears throat> our toxicity testing was came back passing. Also, you mentioned that you wanted, you did not want that semi parked in our parking lot. We put it on the bill of lading. He just re we just received a, a load of ferric. He stayed in Virginia the night before because he seen that on the bill of lading. We had the same driver. He brought it up and unloaded it. But he did tell us, I want to tell you something. If you don't, I'm not going to do what he says, but if you get a driver that's a stickler, by having that on that paper, on that bill of lady, he can refuse to bring that truck on our property. And it's up to you to figure out how to get that ferric into that tank. That's what he told us. He said, I'm not going to do it. But he says, if you get a driver or a company and you get a stickler for a driver, he said, just by having that on there, he can refuse to put that truck on our property and turn around and drive home. And you find somebody else to get it up here. Now, my understanding was that it's because the truck was too loud for the people next door. Truck ran all night. No, he told me he does not run that truck all night. Well, he said he just got an electric, the, huh? That's what the folks over there said. That the, he said in December he ran it for 20 minutes, the truck. And that's all he runs it. He does not even need that truck running for the heater for his sleeper. He's got some type of heater system. He said the truck doesn't run. I said, well, we were told the truck's running all night. And he says no. So. So we do we want to let him come back and park in the lot, or do we want to tell him to try to park somewhere else yet? Or He likes to get up here the night before because he's got an eight-hour drive home. And he was going to check with Menards, though. We, yeah, I told him I'd call Menards, but he said, well, we got two months, two and a half months yet. So no big hurry, he said. What does it say in the bill, lady? It said, do not park the truck in our lot overnight. The truck is too loud. And so how does that give them... He said, just by having them first few, do not truck the, park the truck on our lot. He said, yes, just by reading that. I said, yeah, but it says overnight. Just overnight. He said, it doesn't matter. You could get a stickler, I'm telling you. But for a driver. If you had another driver, oh, and we yeah. argued with him, but he just said, I'm telling you, one for your information. One time he sent a truck home. His boss would be on the phone. And be yeah, like, that's the seconds. thing. If it happens yeah. once, we're finding a new supplier, and okay. we're not playing these games. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah, but the thing is, if we need the load and he turns around, we got to find another driver. We're running low on ferry, then we're violating our permit. Once every three months, he's here. About two and a half months, we yeah. need a load. Yeah. Can't that truck park at the the Menards parking lot? Yeah, we got to get permission from him. We have to get permission from well, Menards. Sure we should. We should park it through. I mentioned that to him too, but he didn't know where that was at this time. That's why he stayed in Virginia the night before. Not it's just something to think about. He just said that. I'm just telling you what he told me. Truck drivers are a weird yeah. lot. Yeah. Guys. Huh? So he isn't. He's saying that he doesn't run it. Well, I don't that truck. 20 minutes, yeah. and would he even have to have the 20 minutes? Why is he running 20 minutes? Just start it up in the morning. In the winter, it's a sleeper, so yeah. he has a little. I'm assuming it's because he has a heater or something that he needs to turn on or do something. For 20, the 20 he minutes. ran for 20 minutes for some reason. But otherwise, he said he's got some other type of heater system that heats that cap. Over he doesn't even run it. That's what he told us. Oh, 
So we will make contact directly with the villa and make sure that we can work with them on that. And if there are any issues, that they contact us directly. And we think we're OK on this the trucking company. And like I said, if there's problems, it'll happen once and that's it. All, all you got to do ahead of time is call that trucking company and just tell them, here's what we, what could, we want done. If you don't want to do, we'll find somebody right now at home. We've always had the same driver. He's been the no, same guy coming in. No, but he isn't that guy. Huh? Yeah, you won't have no problem once you talk to that company. Right. I just thought I'd relay that information to you, yeah. what he told us. But it isn't him, Mr. Huh? He just told me it could happen. Yeah. Yeah. He's playing a game. Yeah, he probably is. Uh, also, uh, last week there on June 14th, we had uh, quite a wind and rain, inch and a half to two inches of rain we recorded. We had quite a few stations down, power outages up the lake. Uh, we were monitoring, two guys were out monitoring all the stations. I know Minnesota Power was out trying to get the power up as soon as they could. We were close to uh, moving all our emergency generators out to the lift stations. We had them all outside ready to go running. And uh, we were just to the point where some of the stations were getting close and we, we got the call that the power was back on. So we did not have to move all the generators up there and get it going on these stations. But we were ready to go. We had them all running outside, ready to go. The two guys were up the lake monitoring all the stations, keeping an eye on it. But we did, uh, we got through that. Also, the Falls Fire and Safety was here. The yearly inspection of all the fire extinguishers. He uh, certified all of them. And uh, we got that done. Uh, Yesterday, we took about 15 students through the plant from the college, microbiology class. And John and I took the, the kids through and uh, spent about an hour with them over there explaining the process and stuff. We started the head works and worked our way all the way through and explained to them how the lift stations, all the lift stations end up coming here and to the EQ. And so it was pretty interesting for them. Uh, also, the June is our pretty big sampling month. It's our second quarterly sampling event. We have quarterly samples that we do in March, June, September, and December. It's a little more extensive. We have to do influent and effluent mercury, cyanide. Uh, so that was completed this month too. Also, uh, this month, I mean, we're, this summer here, we're going to try to get there's other maintenance to do at this plant here, too. We would like to drop all the clarifiers one at a time, clean them out, wash them down, inspect all the gear reducers, inspect the scraper mechanism, and all the scrapers. It's something that we should be doing in the summer, and we're going to try to fit that all in on top of our lift station maintenance and grounds and everything else that comes up. You know, even on a weekly basis, we have gopher locates. The gopher locates come in. You have to go out and mark these services and stuff, and these laterals on these sewer lines when people are doing digging. So we're trying to juggle all of it and get it all in as best we can. And, and uh, also the recirculation wet wells at the plant here. We like to drop them, clean them out, just to be sure that everything's in good working order. And it just takes time to juggle all that at times to get everybody coordinated, and then all of a sudden it starts raining. Great case. You know, and just, I'm just telling you, we're doing the best we can to juggle all that and get it all in. And we did meet all our FM requirements, and we usually have a pretty good, you know, we've always met that. Phosphorus or mercury, we're right in there. And also Cervical for the flow meters. They are here right now calibrating all our flow meters. It was supposed to be done a couple weeks ago, but Ron had some medical issues there. He couldn't make it here, but he is here right now, and him and Jeff are out in the field right now calibrating all the flow meters. So they all get calibrated twice a year to make sure that they're accurate? Yeah, which we have to do according to our permit. And still no sign of our new permit. And I haven't heard a word. So, and that's all I have. Hey, this bill for, I just signed a check for Crandall Septic System. They worked in North Cooch? Yeah, they did. They actually uh, pumped out a meter pit for us at oh, Station okay. 1. We had to clean that all out good so we could see about getting the old full meter out of there. 
Oh, okay. To be able to install the new one, we want to inspect it down there real close. Okay. I was just wondering because the first time I'd seen a bill from Randall to North Poop. Any other questions for uh, oper on the operator's report? Now we'll move on to director's report. Well, as normal, we've talked about most of the things that I've been working on, but uh, like I said, AE2S was here. Um, started on the I and I project. Uh, we need to all set up the MPCA meeting. Um, as Greg indicated, we've hired two students. Uh, Andy Larson is returning. This is his third year back, and he's primarily taking care of the grounds. He's he knows where everything is and has experience doing that. And then the new guy that we hired, his name is Ben Christensen. Um, he has experience. He's kind of a year ahead of sorts and. He's going to prove very useful for the guys because they'll be able to set him up, show him something, and he has, he knows how to get around a garage and how to do mechanical things, so he's going to be pretty valuable for us this year. So I think we've got a pretty good team between the two of them. Um, the auditors were here last Friday? Thursday. Thursday, um, doing our annual compliance audit. Uh, they spent the day here um, going through everything. And, there wasn't anything really earth-shattering that they came upon, so a couple areas that we could look at, but nothing significant this year. Um, the other thing that uh, is in your packet, it was mixed into the East Cooch analysis, but I told you I was going to do this every month. This is the East Cooch billable hours that the, we have built East Cooch for. So in May, it was 52 and a half hours of North Cooch's time helping out East Cooch which is under the 85 hour limit for a month. So no extra charge on that one. That April one, it looks like East Cooch was a little light on the payment. Uh, no, it gets billed at 57.20 for the 10 hours, in, or 10 and a quarter hours that go over the 85. I thought they were a little light on that payment. Ten and a quarter times fifty-seven twenty is five hundred eighty-six dollars and thirty cents. I probably figured wrong. <laughs> so this month there was a like I spent a lot of time going through and preparing the East Coast Cooch analysis. Um, like I said, worked on some of the, the banking stuff, spent some time with AE2S, spent some time getting together some of the information in advance for the AE2S visit. Dealing with whatever came up each day. Uh, as an FYI, um, last, let's see, not this past Saturday, but the Saturday before, John received an email from some people wanting to use our lagoons for bird watching. They had a big birding event that happened this past weekend, and I told them that they could not go onto our ponds because of liability concerns. Um, they didn't take that well locally, the two people that asked for it. There is a bird watching expert or guy that takes care of these tours. I spoke to him directly and indicated that I had some liability concerns just allowing them to go onto our lagoon property. If you're not aware, lagoons are a good location to, to watch birds. Um, this expert that I spoke with said that he understood completely about liability concerns with it, that it had not, it's not the first time he's encountered it with municipalities and it wasn't that big of a deal because of the fact that we're not in a migratory bird <laughs> pattern. Um, so he thought that if they did go to the lagoons, they may spend a half an hour to an hour um, at most there, he said, but there are better places in this area at this time of the year to watch birds. So he was fine with that. Um, we could have tried to work on liability waivers and, and whatever to make it happen, um, but there would have been a lot of effort and we, it would have been off hours, so that means that we would have had to have one of the operators go in open up the ponds for them to go in. It was very short notice. This was something that I think had been on the books for quite some time for them on that calendar. 
um, but we received it in very short notice, and they got a little fussy about it, but we got to protect ourselves as well. And as a result of all of this, I realized, or I was made aware, I should say, that there is a, there is a conceptual voyage forward project that somebody has come up with that looks like that they want to put a parking lot and a viewing platform at the lagoon, uh, right alongside the highway. I, I've only seen an area where they kind of mocked up a little bit. Um, that was the first that I'd been made aware of it, and it wasn't even by the people that were conceiving this project. Um, so just so you're aware that that is out there. They haven't talked to us directly about it to see if we'd be okay with it or anything, but just as an FYI. Cindy, did the, um, the city's doing mock flow metering now too. Is that in conjunction with our AE2S study? Or? Well, uh, probably about a month and a half ago now, AE2S fixed our, did a band aid on our SCADA, so our historian keeps track or keeps recording everything. So we can go and extract that data from, from SCADA, and then we could overlie it with whatever the city's collecting. Um, to do that, we either have to have AE2S invest some time and create a program that would allow us to actually download that data and to put it into Excel or something like that, or there are, is software out there that we could buy um, that would allow us to actually do that, and then we could start manipulating that data. So I haven't gotten into the point yet that I, I've been able to dig into that and really understand, but I know that we are collecting and saving all of that data. So at some point, we do have the capability to do that. There might be some investment in able to do or to be able to do that, but yes. The SDH is they have the contract with the city right now. WSN. Oh, w WSN. Yeah. Okay. So how how our computer system we have at the plant? How much upgrading are they going to actually have to do? To is it how far out of whack is it? Or whatever. Yeah, I don't know that much about. Uh, for us to be set up to re keep a... Uh... All the data is being collected and saved <coughs> on the SCADA system right now. It, it's having the interface to be able to take that data out of SCADA and put it into Excel or something usable that we can actually manipulate it. Because right now, to look at that data, they can go back in time and look at graphs like this. And then we can kind of see, but there's not really numbers or anything really on here. Like you have to move the cursor to be able to see. So, I mean, the data is there, but we need to be able to extract it out in usable form. And that, to get that software, I think the number that they threw at me was in the neighborhood of six grand for one of the proper the programs that they are aware of. Now, how far back would they go on that then? <clears throat> well, prior to AE2S making that change, there was 30 days worth of data that the historian automatically saved. Mm -hmm. So whenever they actually made the change, and I can't remember the date on it, it might, I think it was the beginning of May. They, we probably have till the beginning of April, and that's when we would start having all that data. That data would remain in the historian. I think it was for two years, is how long he, he could save it for. So before we get to the point of two years, we'd have to extract that data out. Go ahead, John. Um, say, um, how um, eager is the City of International Falls to share their data, their flow data, I mean, is that going to be an automatic thing? Do we have to put that in our contract? Uh, well, it may be, see, it may be important <coughs> in timing of certain actions that they do, valves, valving and stuff like that, depending on how far out. I had an um, informal conversation with Ted Broca about that to see if they were seeing anything. That was before all this rain, and to that point, there wasn't really enough rain to, to be able to say anything. So. Through conversations with Ted, I think it's something that we would have access to, but I don't know how how concrete of data that the falls has right now, where they're just kind of looking at it in graphical form like this. So that's something now that we have some data that we might be able to work with them a little bit and see um, just what they can share with us. And it doesn't seem like there's been any hesitation on the part of the falls to share that data. As long as I have this graph, this is um, something that Speaking of I and I, that you should all be aware of, this red line here is the level at EQ. 
So we try to keep it down here, five to seven feet that's usually. Red is the okay. Yeah. okay. That's how that flow came up. That influent flow and started raining. You can see how it shot right up the influent for that. So within an hour of the rain starting, right? Yeah. Um, the flow dramatically increased into EQ. That's within an hour. So we really haven't had a problem just all summer, huh? Well, this is the closest that we've had to a problem. But this is the indication that there is I and I out there. Because in a rainstorm, if we had zero I and I, this red line would just kind of continue along without much problem. The fact that it jumped up that significantly in that's about an hour, I think. That's an hour. If the ground is wet and saturated, that would jump up like that in a half hour. It comes up like that, that in EQ influence. That red is the EQ influence, the water coming into EQ on the main line. You can see how it just shot straight up. So how much rain did we have? About an inch and a half. In what period of time? Or was that off and on over long uh, periods? The 13th of was 1.26, and I believe the 14th it showed 0.26. <coughs> the two day period there, day and a half, inch and a half. But that one night when it started raining like that, that was the little under, well, about 1.26 is what we recorded. Overnight. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so this was just after midnight. Yeah. So consequently, so consequently, the I, or EQ level would also come up unless the pumps can continue to keep up with it. So that's ultimately where we get into the challenges there, when that flow comes up so dramatically. Go ahead, Don. This uh, was the, the last big rain we had? Yeah, this was June 14th. Is it my understanding that we switched the valve so East Cooch and Rainier went to the ponds early in the afternoon. Yeah, that was changed prior to that. Well, you know, and then long before that happened, we had a change. That we diverted the flow. The flow was diverted early. The rain was coming. Right. It, so we diverted it. You diverted it because you it, the rain was coming. Yeah. Forecast. That red line going straight up then is strictly from International Falls? To the yeah. best of our knowledge, yes. Go ahead, Steve. Have you ever seen that spike in within an hour? It's not some coming from off by the ponds. Because I don't think the water will fall that fast. That stuff out there goes to the ponds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, part of the but, I mean, this has to be pretty close to the EQ for you're noticing that kind of a large spike in that short of time. Somewhere. I don't understand. That's so it, when we really have a problem, is is a two inch range? Is that? Well, it depends how saturated the soil is too. We were pretty. Inch and a half, two inches. Yeah, we're in trouble. I mean, we're. If it had rained like that for the week before, like if we got all the rain that they had been predicting, and then we got that rain on top of it, there's a chance that we may have been... Yeah. We didn't know where it was going, so we had all the pumps cranked right up. We were pushing as hard as we could here. I think the tank level there only got to about 8 feet. But like I told you before, it's 24 and a half is where it will open that bypass. So we had a ways to go, but you just don't know. The rain keeps right. on, and we're just so we we crank them wide open and push as hard as we could. Is there anything else for the director? Yes. Question for the director. Is the district considered a municipality or similar to a municipality? In what sense? Well, and I guess I'm questioning on the on the audit. Uh, do we have to have our audited financials to the State auditor by June 30th? They have to fulfill some requirements, but I'm not quite sure what. Yeah, okay. So will the board see the audited report before it goes to the state auditor? Yes. Yeah, I think so. I think so. There's a separate sign. 
So are we having a special meeting? I will, let me talk to Ryan on that one and find out all the details on that question. I just know that municipalities have to have their report to the uh, state auditor by June 30th. And I, I don't know if the district fits I, you in know, that. Uh, I, that's a good question. I don't know if we're even required to uh, send our state auditor, are we? Ryan sent it. John, there was a time, I think, that would change. Let me find out the details on that. I'll specifically ask him. Thank you. Just interesting. I guess I have one more question for you. This 290580 uh, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota, and I was signing these checks, I just seen this one. What is it? Is that for our retirees or what? I, I think so, right? And that's their three-month coverage? That is their, yep, three months of insurance. Okay. Well, I hadn't seen that one before. To Just one other one. Um, last time there was questions about the American Pride, American women, whatever they're called now. Um, Any people? The, the cover all people, yeah. Um, the guys questioned American Pride. Greg, the time they came in, Greg came for, chatted with them, and they lowered the bill by, we'll see where it falls out, but probably 40 to 50 bucks every time. 70. 70? Yeah. Okay, by seventy dollars every time. So a lot of hundred forty a month. So we did cut back on some of the coveralls and the frequency at which they're being cleaned. No, we just cut back on the coveralls and we got rid of a couple rugs. And he said, "Let me see what I can do." And he went back and come back in a few days and showed it to me. He said, "How does that look?" I said, "That looks pretty good." <laughs> <laughs> Just by talking to him, every two weeks he cut the bill by 70 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> you must be very intimidating. Right? Yeah. Well, if you don't ask them, guys, oh, yeah. they're not going to change. I can believe it. <laughs> Stacy can step five wage increase. I would so move to approve her step increase to step five, which is forty three thousand five hundred and fifty one. Second. I thought go ahead, Steve. Well, I know there's a race. One and a half percent this year. So this forty-three five five one is that? Not, that does not include the raise. So that should be. That's correct. Right. I just took we this just page out say, of the contract. So. Yeah. Um, it'll be a little more than that. Yeah, it'll yeah. be one and a half percent on top of that forty-three five five one. Yeah, another five hundred dollars more or so. I thought at one time we discussed that. Uh, the step we were going to... Uh, we went through the union. That's this one. The, uh, this was That's part of the, the contract. Union contract. So these employees that are currently here, they're hired before a certain date. They're kind of grandfathered in. They go okay. by the old pay scale. From now on, the new new employees will be... Yep. They're different, different steps. So it's an increase of 653.27. On top of the step increase. Yes. Yeah. So the step increase is about a thousand. Uh, or, no, no, no. What was it? It's six fifty above what's listed there. It would be forty four thousand two hundred four twenty seven. Would be her new salary. Forty four two hundred four dot two seven. 
Yeah, but going from step year four to year five, that's what I was talking about. Oh. It would be 1380 but that 20 for that 42824 isn't actually what she's making right now because that would have the one and a half percent on top of it as well. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Basically, the her number <coughs> excuse me, would be 442047. No, 44204. 204. 204. Lots of fours. Yeah. And this is one, <clears throat> excuse me, the union feels that, um, that this is just a, an automatic increase. Historically, we've always brought these to the, to the board, so I continue to do that as a courtesy to the board for approval. So we will need a motion on this to approve it. Motion by Billy, second by Thompson. Okay. Nothing we can do about it. There's no way you're going to fight it. It's under contract. If you fight it, you might be yeah. going to a grievance. Yeah. And there's really no reason to fight it. No. Mean, it's been the tradition for all tradition it's been the way of business for all the employees that they continue moving on their steps unless there's a reason that that she wouldn't get it which there isn't she does an excellent job um, it should be approved. call for a vote yes 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 vote yes any other new business Oh, it's on the agenda. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, um, what are we going to do? Uh, Something about that I and I deal with, uh, with funding. What are we going to see if they were take that. Oh, that getting back with uh, WSN, the as built and the uh, ONMs. Is there any word on that? Yeah, uh, WSN will be coming up in the next couple weeks. They have a little bit of thing, or a few things that they have to double check. Um, and it sounds like some documents should be forthcoming. Okay. All right. We don't have to get another look. At this point, I'm saying no. Um, but that may not be the final word. Mm -hmm. The um, correspondence under the correspondence here, Mike. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> with funds, uh, that's based on flow. Correct. Right? Everybody pays fifty cents per thousand gallons, and that's based on total flow. So that number is the total flow for the line, and that's currently built into the rate. Remember, we made that change at the beginning of the year. Adjourn or motion to adjourn. Alright. So adjourn.